You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking with Lewis Coleman, who is one of America's top philanthropists, and he's also a, a phenomenal businessman and the author of Can't Take It With You, The Art of Making and Giving Money. So I'd like to start today with the title of your book, which is The Art of Making and Giving Money. You talk about making it first. Um, yep. Mr. Coleman, maybe you could tell us, how did you make it? And then we'll get to how did you give it away? Well, I did what has been uh, been identified as as the first leverage buyout. Actually, at the time, it was called a bootstrap. That was before that term was even even in, in, involved. And uh, we 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 managed to to put up a thousand dollars and buy a company for sixty two million four. I think that's <laughs> leverage. Uh, I don't think it's been done like that since. It was uh, we, we we bought Orkin Exterminating Company, which is a a, a pest control company. And we owned it for maybe 15 seconds. It ended up in the hands of, of Rollins Broadcasting, and that, 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 <laughs> that's that's the way we start, that's how we started. And then after that, uh, my wife said, "What are you going to do for an encore?" So I, I went out and did another one, uh, of, of much smaller. And then we ultimately uh, bought a company called Keith Clark, which was a calendar company here. And, Started in Hudson Street, New York, but moved up to Sydney, New York, which is halfway between Binghamton and Oneonta, and we we built that business up by by uh, buying up every little mom and pop calendar company we could find, and ended up buying At a Glance, which was part of Textron, <laughs> and by, we changed our name to At a Glance, and in November one ninety nine we sold that business for five hundred and fifty million bucks. Wow, and that's when I decided that uh, my my activities were more in giving money away than in making it. And I've been quoted as saying, "I think it's more difficult to give money away in television than it ever was to make it. You don't have the same incentives and same same type of things you can use in in, in business." Interesting. So, for for most small investors who have a thousand bucks, would you suggest that they also try and a leveraged buyout? Uh, well, you can always try it. I mean, the question is how, how, how good a salesman you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole. I mean, and that's that's it's 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 a lot of sales. I mean, we we had we came back from Atlanta when we had the first call. Came back to New York and 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 went, went over to the Peru and borrowed forty million bucks from the from the Peru. <laughs> and they and they gave it to two young men then. We were pretty young, but uh, but we I guess we were very uh, convincing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it turned out turned out to be a good deal in the end. So you turned out to be a good deal, and and it it, it gave me an opportunity uh, to do what uh, my, my mother always uh, said to me. She, she'd rather give money away when she's alive than than give it away in your will, because she said, well, well, what do you care what people say when you're dead? You won't be around to hear it. That is I, true. I, I, I mentioned that to uh, to Warren Buffett one day when he spoke at, at the library. He he was being interviewed by Steve Shepard of Business Week, and Steve said he's going to give all his money away when he when he dies. And then, of course, this was before the, the crash. Uh, he said he was getting seventeen and a quarter percent on, uh, compound on on Berkshire Hathaway. Mm-hmm. Now, when the question period came, I got around and said, Warren, why don't you get some money away? you like, get some joy out of it. What do you care what they say when you're dead? You won't be around to hear it. <laughs> well, didn't he end up giving away a lot of money, ultimately? No, he hasn't given it all. I mean, they, 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 they've been very... He and, uh, and Gates have had this whole deal where asking uh, billionaires to, to, to pledge that they will give uh, 50% of their net worth away. Well, yeah, you've you've been but, quoted as saying you don't think that's quite uh, quite a good deal, well, right? Quite no, right. I don't. I didn't say it's a good. Deal. It's not enough. That's all. I mean, it's a very good deal, but uh, uh, if if you have uh, thirty billion dollars and you give half it away, you still got fifteen. I think it's a lot of money. You don't think you'd be suffering at that point, having trouble perhaps finding you know a good restaurant that would you could afford? 
<laughs> with well, 15 billion. <laughs> no, I hear. I think it's very. The, 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 the point. The point is that that, that uh, I mean, I, I I feel that you should give a, a lot more than uh, 50 percent. That's all. That's, that's my that's my position. I've done that. No, absolutely you have. We are talking to Lewis Coleman, who really is one of America's top philanthropists, not only in terms of the amount of money that he's given, but in the philosophy that he has given behind it. And he's written the book, Can't Take It With You, The Art of Making and Giving Money. Mr. Coleman, why did you write the book? I wrote, uh, wrote the book because I felt, uh, first of all, I'd been interviewed uh, three times at Columbia Oral History, which made it very easy. And I, I felt that I wanted to uh, take a crack at, at, at recording it. And so I had all, all this information. And one of the funny things was a lot of my friends said, gee, you've got a heck of a memory. How do you remember all these details? I said, well, I, I, I practiced my memory. Oh, I didn't, didn't tell them. The <laughs> but uh, you know, it was fun. I mean, the, uh, the first part was, was how, how I made it. And the, and the second part was, was all about... Uh, Giving it away. Then I wrote a a brochure, which which uh, was a lot of fun. How to succeed in fundraising by really trying. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've 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 enjoyed. Uh, I mean, I really I, I think you shouldn't give money away if you don't get a joy out of it. Right. No sense, no sense agonizing over it. There's a lot of discussion that people have whether you should give give away money anonymously or eponym, eponymously. With, with or without your name on it. And certainly there are many buildings that do have your name on it, and I want to thank you because I've been in many of them before. What my wife and I did, I, and I decided this, that since my interest was primarily science and hers was primarily art, if, if, if the particular charity is my interest, it's Lewis and Dorothy. If it's her interest, it's Dorothy and Lewis. <laughs> so the names are, are reversed. <laughs> I hear. That's just a little trick I, I've had some fun doing. That sounds smart. Uh, you were married to Dorothy for 46 years, yeah? That's right. So you were a good team in terms of both earning and uh, and giving it away. Yeah. For well, people- we, 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 we shared our, our interests. I mean, um, she she had a lot of very innovative ideas. I think probably the, what, the one thing that stands out is the Scholars and Writers Program at the New York Public Library, which has become world-renowned. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, that 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 is the best thing you can have when you have people who who have been there, who said at a, at a board meeting that they went on to loftier literary circles, and what they heard from every, how does one get into the Coleman program? Well, that's 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 an endorsement that you. The other in, in my case, we we I set up a, a joint program with the American Museum of Natural History and the New York Botanical Garden on molecular systematics, which is a simple term. Systematics is the classification of plants and animals, and the word molecular only means you're, you're using DNA, which, mm-hmm. which, which is a whole new, new thing. Well, that changed the whole picture. It was the first time two major institutions had collaborated, and it's made the New York Botanical Garden probably the most uh, eminent uh, botanical science institution in the world. Fabulous. You're also very involved in chess. You've, uh, you've been a, a big well, supporter. Well, the, uh, the, the chess program, uh, that came about through a fluke. Uh, I had worked with for, um, Maurice Wertheim years ago, and he was an ardent uh, chess aficionado. And he uh, sent some... Uh, American chess players over to the Soviet Union. This was back in the late 40s, maybe early 50s. Late 40s, I think it was. And, of course, they got beaten badly. At the end of the year, he was doing his tax return. He, he said to his account, he'd like to deduct the cost of the trip. And the guy said, you can't do that. He, and he blew his stack. He said, God damn it, I did something for my country. There must be a way. He said, well, set up a foundation. Well, that was the genesis of the American Chess Foundation. Which I got, I was invited on the board, and all we all they talked about was tournaments, and I said, you know, we do have to raise a little money, and then by chance in 1986 we had experimented with the idea of putting chess in in some schools. We put one in one in the Bronx, one in Harlem, and one in Brooklyn. When I heard about that, they said that makes more sense <laughs> to to teach chess, and that's that's how we started. We reached. We we reach over 500,000 kids so far. We start them in second or third grade, and when that happens, 
well, if the school wants us, that means the principal and the teacher wants us, then every single kid takes chess. We don't care. That is a screening process. We don't know whether the kids are bright. They don't know, and if they have a parent, uh, the parent doesn't know. By that, <clears throat> you, the kids would find out that they had no interest. They thought they had no interest in chess, and then they suddenly have an interest. Mm-hmm. And then the most wonderful thing happens, these kids get good very quickly. And they'll go, let's say, to the Nationals, and they'll beat a kid, say, from Dalton. They say, gee, that rich kid isn't so let's just beat the hell out of him in chess. <laughs> that's, that's self-esteem that you, you can't recreate anywhere else. Uh-huh. I think the problem with, with, in this country, anyway, is the typical African-American or Latino from the disadvantaged neighborhoods in school have two role models, either a sports figure or an a, a athletic figure. Neither one of them are within their reach. So they, they feel like they failed. Mm-hmm. Where you give them something else, which which we do, which is chess. I, it doesn't have to. I mean, chess is just one of the of a number of things you can do. I mean, I know that uh, my friend of mine, uh, Aggie Gunn, has a, called something called studio in school, which is an art art thing. There's a there's a class there's a classroom dancing. There are all there are all kinds of things you can do for you. I just happen to focus on chess. It's it's very economical uh, because you, you don't have, you don't need much equipment. Mm-hmm. I mean. It also and builds up, uh, not only does it build up their self-esteem, but the strategic thing. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Well, that, that's, that's the whole thing. But they have to learn. And, and we've had interesting quotes from our kids who, who mention they get into a difficult situation uh, in life, let's say. And they'd say, well, gee, what would I do in a chessboard? And oh, they, wow. They, 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 relate, they relate back to, to the strategy of, of chess. Would I, would I make this move and make that move? And it's, it's, it's rather gratifying to hear that kind of thing. I mean, I'm very proud. I mean, of all the things I've done, I think I, think I get more kick out of uh, the fact that I think we have, we have saved some lives. That's, sure. that's my attitude. And uh, these kids, we have a college-bound program, which is the, the ones that really turn out to be bright. We give them the mentoring. We take them on college trips. We get 100% of those kids into college. They've gotten into prestigious colleges, whether it be Yale, Princeton, Harvard, MIT, oh, you name it, our kids have gotten there. And they would never, never have had that opportunity had it not been for the, the, the chance that they, they happened to get into the chess program. That's amazing. We we are talking with Lewis Coleman, who is certainly one of the uh, the top philanthropists in the U.S. He's the author of the book "You Can't Take It With You," and prob- and the, the founder of the leveraged buyout. So he's really moved from making money to giving it away. I'm very sorry to say that we're out of time today, but Mr. Coleman, I just want to thank you for all of your wisdom, and I hope that we'll have you back on the show again soon. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be helpful. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.